Natasha de Souza reporting for Salt Voices, and I'm here at the inaugural Salt Abu Dhabi with Winston Ma, a former managing director at the China Investment Corporation and now professor at NYU, teaching all about sovereign wealth funds. That's right. Okay, so yes. your students will have a lot to be able to pick your brains on on that subject. Yeah, and actually learning from the examples like Mubadala, UAE ah. examples. Now take me through today. You mm. led the audience through mm. a discussion about the digital Silk Road. Yes. Tell us about you know what you mm. shared with the audience today. Of course, of course. Actually, it's a, it's a really exciting to speak about digital Silk Road mm -hmm. on the Mobadara stage, mm -hmm. right? Because I, for one thing, uh, my last ten years with uh, CIC, uh, I made lots of friends at Mobadara. Okay. Uh, my counterparts in the private investment world, okay. right? And actually for my NYU course about sovereign funds, mm. more other people kind enough to come to my class as guest speakers and even sponsored a, a reception. And of course, not at the, at the scale of a uh, uh, sort conference Abu Dhabi, <laughs> Abu Dhabi but uh, good enough to make the students happy, okay. right? And okay. the, the, on the students other, have low expectations, so yes. <laughs> right, yeah. And the, the, uh, for another, right, you know, the, the, for digital circle concept, uh, actually, UAE is one of the early group of countries that okay. have signed agreement with China on cross-border e-commerce and uh, uh, cross-border data flow cooperation. Okay. Yeah. So the digital Silk Road. I mean, of right. course, Hart takes us back to what the Silk Road originally meant. That's right. right in that's history. Right. Correct. So when it comes to digital Silk Road, who are the main, you know, agents and partners and yeah. you know entities coming together and yeah. connected through the Silk Road? Great, great question. Yeah, because uh, the, the traditional uh, Belt Road mm -hmm. uh, brings people in mind a network of enormous physical infrastructures yes. of railroads, uh, ports, pipelines, energy uh, pr production sites. Yes. Right. Uh, but for the new digital Silk Road, it's the digital dimension. Okay. Uh, of the Silk Road, right? Okay. You, because the cyber, the, the Silk Road in the cyberspace, and it, to some extent, it become much bigger concept because, a, it's in the cyberspace, so therefore it's not limited to geogra ge geographic no geographic constraints. connections, yes. right? It's not yes. just Eurasia; it's cyberspace, okay. right? And then the uh, another aspect is it relates to the new economy, mm. right? Um, the, the, the 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 traditional infrastructures may relate to the traditional industries. But for the digital Silk Road, it connects the digital economy with the current uh, society. Why do we need a digital Silk Road? I think that, uh, uh, there are several very, very important reasons. Number one, very basically, we still have almost half of the global population has no basic internet con connectivities, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so to develop this infrastructure to get people the basic connectivity mm -hmm. is a huge step to solve the uh, global income uh, uh, gap, right? So that's number one. And number two, if people are not part of the digital world, actually those people are missing out a lot True. of fun, a lot of fun, right? Mm -hmm. You know, uh, in China- A lot of money and a lot of fun. fun yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> now, in China, right, you know, when, when the internet penetrates into lower tier cities, the rural areas, uh, lots of, uh, 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 you know, yeah, young generation, actually they call themselves small town youth, right? Mm -hmm. You know, they're living in remote areas and they become first time content consum con consumers, mm -hmm. right? Uh, they, they are having a lot more fun than before, mm -hmm. right? Uh, but but uh, to me, the most important part is, is the third aspect, which is link entrepreneurs with a large digital ecosystem, right? Okay. Yeah, lots of entrepreneurs may have great ideas coming out of smaller markets, remote markets, markets with little infrastructure and a small number of users. Mm -hmm. But when they are connected to a larger ecosystem, they have a better chance to test and commercialize and expand Correct. their ideas. Correct. Now, as the digital Silk Road, as you said, what is the UAE's role specifically in that? Like, how mm -hmm. do you see the UAE playing a part in that? Yeah, I, I think the UAE will play a huge part uh, in the digital Silk Road, in particular as a hub to the Middle East, mm -hmm. right? Uh, earlier, you, you, you question about what are the main players. Correct. You, yeah, the, uh, in, in, the, in the traditional Belt Road, the, the main players are typically the, the large industry companies, the, 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 the policy banks, mm. right? And, and uh, uh, construction teams, right? But here, uh, 
uh, you see more new economy companies, venture capital, uh, and obviously the internet, internet giants that are looking for the next billion users beyond the China market and the US market. So tell me, Winston, who decides yeah. who gets to be a part of the Silk Road? Because we all know in the age yeah. of the internet, we're all connected you know, yes. regardless. Mm -hmm. So I guess what I'm trying to better understand is like, yeah. who is the Silk Road specifically you know, set aside for? Is it, is it selective about who gets to be a part of it? And, and yeah. how does one get to be a part of it? I see, I see. No, I, I think it's a, it's a boast about being selected and being proactive, right? Mm -hmm. uh, being selected is, uh, there are countries that are more open to this cross-border digital collaboration, mm -hmm. right? So UAE is one of the early group of countries that signed the Digital Silk Road Agreement with China, mm -hmm. right? So this gives the, 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 the UAE companies a, a big start to collaborate with Chinese internet giants, right? Okay. Yeah. On, the other hand, on the other hand, right, the Digital Silk Road can just be viewed as a mindset of connectivity, okay. right? You know, to keep expanding, keep open up the ecosystem and reach out to the next billion users, right? Uh, so, so this is what we see uh, in, the, uh, in the Chinese uh, internet giants or the digital tech companies mm -hmm. uh, or the network uh, uh, equipment companies. They are, they are all coming to emerging markets, including Middle East, right? To, to, to reach out the new, the, 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 the new users as well as trying new products in a different market. Because to me, you know, this will be a huge uh, uh, hub uh, for Digital Silk Road. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Because if right you, here in Abu Dhabi. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Yeah, because if you think about the, the, the thinking behind Hub 71 AD is to create a Silicon Valley innovation hub in the middle of the Middle East, mm. right? Uh, and uh, right now, you know, it, it will attract talents, you know, capital, technology, right, to, to develop this thing. Right. And I think the, the Digital Silk Road initiative will bring a lot of momentum to this because it will attract Chinese companies to set up a presence here. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, which, they're, yeah, which they're doing in more and more numbers. Right, yeah. actually Tencent, right, yes. the, the, the largest uh, internet giant in China mm -hmm. is already setting up a presence in Hub 71 AD. Mm -hmm. uh, more and more Chinese companies are looking for acquisition opportunities mm -hmm. in uh, uh, in Abu Dhabi as a way to reach the broader Middle East area, True. right? But I think it's fair mm. to say also that Chinese companies, especially yeah. the ones that are aggressive of pursuing growth, have always had their eye out yeah. and they've had this appetite for doing business here. Exactly. Yeah, even, even yeah. before, But say, the big difference is China is one market, Middle East is 28 countries, yeah. right? So it's, <laughs> it's very, very important different. to work with Innovation Center mm. as a connecting a point okay. to the different markets. To be a good nexus that turns into a gateway to the market. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so in that con con context, Hub 7180 can be a small city, can be an innovation center, and it can also be a business center. Okay. Right? Thank you so much, Winston. Yeah. Great having you here, and thank you for speaking with us. That's all thank you places. for having me at Abu Dhabi. Thank you. Thank you.